It's Friday, October 29th. Tomorrow is the 30th, which is the open of second rifle season in Colorado. My son and I are going to be hunting. My son has a elk tag and a buck deer tag, and I have a buck deer tag. And we're sitting here by the fire, got our camp set up. We're warming up some food. Forgot our fuel for the stove, so we're using the fire to do the cooking. And uh, we're on the side of a hill. Um, just enough room for the footprint of the three-man tent. Yeah, and a little place back here for our fire. But it works out just perfect. And it's a new moon, so it's completely dark out here, which is also perfect. You can see a lot of stars in the sky. And uh, we look forward to bringing some great footage for you of this hunting adventure. Our objective on this second season was really for my son to fill his bull elk tag. Due to school commitments, he only had one day to hunt, so we knew our odds were slim. But we decided to sit on this park. We sat there all day. We've had cameras in this area that I refer to as the old homestead all summer and into the fall. In fact, while we were hunting there, we still had cameras. Here you can see some footage of elk that were grazing in this clearing last summer. And while we were hunting there, I also had a camera, a trail camera, mounted in the trees behind the clearing. And that's an area that I call the sanctuary. I've had cameras there since June of 2021. Unfortunately, we didn't see anything this day. And as I say, timing is everything. I'm sure if we would have had more time, we would have <clears throat> spotted an elk. This trail camera video from the sanctuary shows that just four days before the hunting season, there was a cow elk there grazing. And two days before the hunting season, this bull elk showed up and was grazing. Both of these elk were in the area for a significant period of time in front of the camera. It's interesting watching the bull elk feed, the way he just jabs his nose right into the snow and comes up with a mouthful of grass. I met a hunter uh, in the fourth season higher up on the mountain, and he told me that he used to hunt with his father there in the fourth season, and they would have a foot and a half of snow and still be full of elk. And this is their summer grounds, not their wintering grounds. So I guess if the snow gets to a foot and a half, two feet deep, they just paw the snow back and then, you know, go down and jab their nose in the remaining snow and get the grass. Amazing. Well, I came back a few days later and I decided that I wanted to go up to the tundra above the tree line and try hunting up there for my deer tag. I figured it'd be a good place to find a buck. I hiked up through Beetle Kill, Deadfall, of across the side of this mountain with my 70 pound pack. There wasn't any trail there. I just blazed my own trail. I had to pick my way through the deadfall, but it was uh, a great adventure. Once you get started, at first you're intimidated and then you decide you just can't turn back and you gotta go all the way. While I was up there, it snowed for three days. It was basically in the low to mid 20s and any time some air that would come in with moisture, it would just turn into powder and fall. So I started out with about three inches of snow and it ended up being about a foot by the time I was done, with the exception of areas where it would drift and then you could have any amount of snow. You can see here why you want a three season tent if you're camping in these conditions. The three season tent has a fly that comes all the way down to the ground and that top is of the tent itself, interior, is a netting. What this does is allows your body moisture to escape uh, from perspiration and breathing and either freeze to or run down the fly outside the tent and keep your sleeping bag dry. 
The other thing about the three C's intent is that I think it is coated with some sort of uh, reflective coating that directs the heat back into the tent, as well as the long fly coming all the way to the ground keeps most of the wind out because it typically is, you know, five to 10 degrees warmer inside the tent than it is outside, amazingly. So I spent three days up there. You can see the view out from the front of the tent. And here, a deer had bed just 50 yards from my tent, even though I was, ca I was hunting on the tundra on the other side of this spur behind my tent all day. So the deer was either there while I was hunting or while I was sleeping at night. I discovered the bed upon my return. On the third day, it was supposed to get cold, very cold that night. And I was concerned, one, that I couldn't deal with that cold of weather. And secondly, that if there was more snow, I might have trouble getting out of the mountains. You know, carrying a 70 pound pack and going through deadfall is not a, it's, it's not a task for the timid, I'd say. So I decided after three days that it was best for me to get out of there. In hindsight, I should have hunted in an area which I ended up hunting during the third season at 10,600 feet where I did find a lot of deer activity and I did harvest a deer in my other video. Anyway, this is the recap of what happened during second season. We learned a lot and I think if we would have had more days to hunt uh, for my son's elk down there in the park, I think he would have been successful with that. I hope you enjoyed the video and the next one I'm going to give you a recap of the fourth season.